Today we will learn how to edit extremely dark and underexposed photos and turn them into beautiful ones. Let's get started. First I open my photo in Photoshop. Since it's a raw file it will automatically open camera raw filter. You can find the link for the image in the description below but it's not the direct link and you should find it in the page. So the first thing which is obvious is to increase the exposure and also the shadows to make the image brighter. Then some contrast. I'm gonna try whites too and increase it a little bit. Then increase the haze a little. Now I go to color mixer section and from here try the colors one by one to see where it's used and adjust the sliders. As you can see we have a little bit of red. Some oranges and yellows. Not much green just on the lights in the background. And I'm gonna change the hue of the greens to blue or aquas. Then try other colors too, and as you can see we have some blue in the sky. Some purple. Okay, I'm gonna increase the luminance of the colors to make the image brighter. And also change the hue of the purples to blues to reduce the colors that are used in the photo. Then I go back to basic section and bring the tinted slider towards the greens. I think it needs more exposure. I brighten the shadows in the basic section but I think it's not enough. So I go to curve section and increase the dark slider a little to make the dark areas more brighter. Not the shadows the slider, just the darks. And also a little bit of lights. Here you can see the before and after of the adjustments with backslash key. Now I go to color grading and I want to apply some colors to highlights and shadows and also midtones. First I add some bluish color to the shadows like this. Then some warm yellow color or orange to the highlights. And also for the midtones some orange color but not much, just a little. That's good. I just wanted to make the image sharper, but I think the style of this image is way better with the faded and kind of vintage look. So this faded style looks better. Also, I can decrease the contrast. Now for the final step, I just want to increase the vibrance a little to give it more color. Not the saturation, just the vibrance. Also maybe adding some grain would help with the vintage look. and even maybe decrease the sharpen. No need for vignetting, it already has some around the image. So that's it with the camera raw filter. Now we can open our photo as an object. 
The reason we open the photo as object is that if you want to change the adjustments later, we can double click on the object layer and we can access our previous settings. Now, as you can see, we don't need heavy retouching on the face and the skin since the photo is taken from a distance. Just some minor adjustments on the face would be enough. First, I create a curves layer and focus on the lights in the background. I want to make them brighter. So I increase the light section, which is at the right top corner. And after getting the results that I want, I invert the mask of the layer. Then pick a brush and with the white color, paint on the areas that I want to be affected by the curves layer. Just tapping on these lights to make them brighter. As you can see only on the lights. Now I create a copy from photo layer with Ctrl J keys and right click on it and rasterize the layer. Now I pick dodge tool from here and with the range set to highlights and exposure of 5%, I paint on the highlighted areas of the hair to make them brighter. And also on the bright areas of the eyes where the light is reflected to make them more shiny. Then I press J key to pick up a spot healing brush tool and tap on these blemishes on the skin to remove them. Also, I can remove this hair too with the spot healing brush. And that's it. Now I just press C key to pick crop tool and crop my image to get rid of these unwanted areas. Now I want to cheat a little and add some extra light to the photo. I have some overlay photos which are uh, bokeh photos that I've downloaded. And I want to add some of these to the photo. Let's see. Maybe this one. Nope. Yeah, I think this one should look fine since the lights are in a row and looks almost as same as the street behind the subject. After adjusting the angle and size, I just hit enter and then change the blending mode of the layer to a screen to only see the lights. Then I apply mask to it and with black brush, I paint over the areas that I want to be removed. Then maybe I'll add some of these other ones. Let's see. Yeah, that's fine. Then again, I pick the brush tool and mask the areas that I want to be removed. So maybe one more. What about this one? Yeah, that's cool. And also decrease the opacity a little to make it look more natural. This one needs to be adjusted. Okay, I group all these and now you can see the before and after of the light effect. I've also had downloaded a photo of the moon. I just place it right here in the corner. And set its mode to screen, but 
the areas around the moon need to be cleaned, so I mask them out. And I duplicate it to be more visible. I think we have to do something about this white color on the moon. Let me see. I delete the duplicated layer and apply an adjustment layer, which is levels, to make these dark areas darker and separated from bright areas. Now if I change the blending mode to screen, all the dark areas would disappear. Then I can duplicate it. But actually I think it's too much for the moon and maybe decrease the opacity. No, I just, I just delete the second layer and one layer is enough. Now if I bring the original image above this photo and if I can adjust it perfectly, You can see the before and after of the whole process. As you can see, it was like very dark and almost nothing was visible. And here is the after. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new from this video. Now it's time to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And also you can ask all of your questions in the comment section. Hit the like and see you in the next video.